Welcome back to We Heart Therapy. You're watching your guide to therapy and coaching, and I'm your host, Annabelle Bugatti. Today, we're gonna to talk about the primary difference between the letters behind your therapist's name. When you're doing a Google search and you're looking for a therapist or a counselor to see, it's easy to get confused with the swell of letters coming your way, thinking, okay, all these people are marketing to me and my problem, yet they all have different letters behind their name. How do I know what those letters mean and why would I wanna see that person with those letters versus this person with these letters? So we're gonna talk about all those differences. And I'm gonna tell you right off the bat that there is a lot of overlap between the professions um, so that's why they're all marketing to you. When we talk about the differences between the letters, the primary difference is going to be in the, how they conceptualize clients and their problems. And um, that obviously affects how they do their course of treatment. But the also other primary difference is number of years that they've had to go to school and the type of degree that they hold. So for instance, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor who's gone through medical school, just like your general MD, but rather than specializing in oncology or radiology, they've specialized in, psycho in psychiatry. So psychiatry is a field that specializes in diagnosing and treating mental health and psychiatric disorders. So some psychiatrists do offer counseling and therapy, but not all of them. So if you want to find a therapist that can also prescribe you medication, you would have to see a psychiatrist. Though you can see a regular therapist who does not have the ability to prescribe medication, but also go to a psychiatrist just to get your medication. Um, as I mentioned, not all psychiatrists offer counseling and therapy, but some of them do. No other mental health profession currently can prescribe medication, though many of them are lobbying to get that as part of their scope of practice. But currently, only psychiatrists can uh, write you a prescription for medication. Next, you have a clinical psychologist. They have to go through a doctoral program. You cannot become a clinical psychologist with a master's degree, at least in the United States. Psychi psychologists also focus on diagnosing and treating mental health disorders, but rather than using um, medication, they use talk therapy as their approach. They can see couples, they can see individuals, they can see families, and depending on their additional training after school will depend on which type of clientele that they would like to see. Some of them don't want to see couples or families, some of them do, so that will be the difference. And a lot of them can do psychological testing. And again, usually when you go into therapy with a psychologist, many of them are looking for what the disorder is. They'll see your problem as um, a disorder, diagnose the disorder, and then treat the disorder. Other types of um, licensed therapists do not necessarily look at you as a disordered person and will not necessarily be diagnosing you. They're gonna have a more holistic approach or a relational or contextual approach to your problem. Now again, not all psychologists do look at this, but their training does sort of focus them in that direction. So after a psychologist, then you have your master's level therapist. Now, many therapists, all the, all the professions actually offer PhDs or doctoral degrees in those types of professional counseling. But the difference is, again, to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Psychiatrist, you have to go to medical school. Psychologist, you do have to go through a doctoral program. You cannot practice uh, counseling or therapy without that doctoral program. Whereas mental health counseling, social work, and uh, marriage and family therapy, uh, professional counseling, you only have to have a master's degree to be able to get a clinical license and perform therapy. So next we have LCSW or MSW. This basically means a social worker. MSWs do not have a clinical license to be able to work in private practice, so they're restricted to agency work. Now social workers are focused more on social advocacy, social justice, and connecting people to resources. That's why you find most MSWs in agencies, Department of Family Services, and uh, maybe Child Protective Services. So they work on helping connecting people uh, to resources and you know they work a lot with addiction and uh, like I said lots of social issues. Um, LCSWs are social workers who have gotten their clinical license so that they can work in private practice. Many of them have had more advanced uh, training beyond their master's degree so that they can focus on individual problems beyond just uh, the social justice issues. So an LCSW will be in private practice and they can see individuals um, 
and treat, treat you for your problems. And they do, again, traditional talk therapy. Next, you have, um, you have LMHCs or LPCs. So we're talking about licensed mental health counselors or licensed professional counselors. Sometimes they'll throw in LCMHC or LCPC. So that just stands for licensed clinical professional counselor, licensed clinical mental health counselor. Basically, they're the same. They've gone through the same uh, training programs, both of these models of counseling came out of guidance counseling and career counseling, and they sort of evolved from there. They are also looking at diagnosing disorders and treating the disorder. Uh, so again, they will see you uh, more as, you know, what's the disorder going on here? Let's find the disorder <laughs> and treat you again. Now, this isn't a one size fits all. There are lots of uh, LMHCs or LPCs that do not just go straight for diagnosis. But again, that's the way their education goes. Um, and again, the difference between those two licenses really has to do with the state that you're in. Some states still keep the licensed clinical mental health counseling license. Some of them don't recognize that even though they've gone through the exact same master's degree program. Other states, the license will be a licensed professional counselor, licensed clinical professional counselor. In some states, a LPC or LCPC or an LMHC cannot see couples or families. Some states, they can only see individuals. So depending on the state that you're in will depend on whether or not the person with LPC or LMHC or LCPC, whether or not they can see you as a couple or a family or they'll just see individuals. Next, you have LMFT. These are licensed marriage and family therapists. Again, you have to have a master's degree. And the difference here is that um, marriage and family therapists view people in the context of their family and their social situation. And we see problems uh, that you might be going through, anxiety, any type of uh, situation that another type of uh, professional might classify as a mental health disorder or diagnose you with a disorder. Marriage and family therapists will look at it more from a holistic relational sense and they'll be looking to see what's going on in the family or the relationship that might be causing this. So they're not necessarily looking to, to say that you're ill or that you have a disorder, though they are also trained to be able to identify and diagnose disorders. But in general, they focus more on the family as a system and have a more roundabout approach taking in the social context and the relational context. Now again, a lot of the other therapists in the other um, alphabet soup, let's just call it, also have done advanced training and they choose their model of counseling that they like. And depending on the model that they've chosen will also affect whether or not they continue to see you as a disordered person or if they look at you holistically or they just you know, wanna treat the disorder or again, if they're taking a relational contextual approach. And nowadays, much, much of the fields in all the variety of masters and doctoral programs available will offer the contextual and relational approach. But again, they're not necessarily doing all of the training about viewing clients this way or that way. So that's the primary difference. So an LMFT can see couples, individuals, families, um, LMHC, LPCs, LCPCs, depending on the state, may or may not be able to see couples. And you have LCSWs and MSWs that are social works. Um, some of them are able to see couples and uh, they do, if they work in private practice, they have to be an LCSW, meaning they have that licensed clinical background. Um, MSWs are working more in public service areas, um, Department of Family Services, agency settings, connecting people to resources. Um, and, and they'll tend to view problems as more of a resource problem. What resources do we need to get this person to or they're suffering this problem because they have a lack of resources. Psychologists can also see individuals and couples and families. And a psychiatrist can see anybody, but again, they are primarily um, oriented towards diagnosing psychiatric and mental health disorders and prescribing medication. And uh, you also may find the letters um, LCADC or LADC, some derivative of that, basically just means that they're a licensed or certified alcohol and drug counselor. So these are your substance abuse counselors. Some states you do not have to have a mental health um, degree to become a certified uh, alcohol or drug counselor. 
you may just have to go through extensive training and you're only treating uh, substance abuse problems. So you may work in a outpatient or inpatient uh, agency or facility treatment center that focuses on treating people who are struggling with addiction or, or recovering from addiction and that's all they focus on. They don't focus on diagnosing disorders, they don't focus on family issues, they don't focus on treating your anxiety, they're working on the addiction only. So they can't work on anxiety or anything else going on in your life because they don't have the correct education or the licensing. Their certification licensing is only towards substance abuse. And you may find some therapists that are MFTs um, or social workers or uh, LPCs, whatever, that also choose to pick up an additional certification or license in substance abuse counseling if they'd like to include that in their practice. So I hope that this was informational and that you're able to understand the difference between all the different types of therapists. Again, a lot of overlap between all of them, but now you have a basic idea of where their education has sort of focused their direction on seeing clients, how they may conceptualize it. But again, it's not necessarily one size fit all, fits all. Lots of uh, folks after their degree program have gotten additional training and uh, are able to see a variety of issues and a variety of clientele. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you hit subscribe because more videos are on the way.